we've talked about a few different things that you should be able to do on the calculator up to this point. Um, a couple of them are pre-calculus things like finding zeros of a function, uh, like finding the intersections of two functions. Um, and then we've got the calculus one, which deals with the tangent line problem, where we find the derivative of a function at a point. And now what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate definite integrals on the calculator. Again, when I use the term integrals right now, we're talking about definite integrals. Um, I'll be a little more careful about distinguishing once, once we have both of them and, and we need to talk about that. Um, so we're going to evaluate definite integrals on the calculator, which means that we're going to use the calculator to find an area under a curve for us. Now, we talked yesterday about finding the area under a curve of some geometric shapes that we know. Um, most of the types of functions that we're going to deal with, though, are not going to create the type of geometric shape that we know how to find the area of. So this is going to be the only way we know at this point to evaluate a definite integral or to find an area under a curve um, somewhat exactly. We're not actually going to be finding it exactly because the calculator is going to give you a decimal answer. Uh, and the decimal is really just an approximation. But it's a pretty good approximation. And this is not the problem I want. That's better. So what we have now is an integral. That was, that was a, an example that we did earlier with the tangent line problem. Um, this is actually something we've seen already. We, I showed you this integral just when we were talking about um, integral notation and what things mean. Um, so just a quick reminder of what this actually means, how we interpret this in the physical world, um, in this case on the coordinate plane. Um, we have the function x squared, y equals x squared, and we want to find the area between um, the x coordinates 1 and 2. So what we're looking for is the area of this region right here. Okay? Now, when, when we talked about this, we said we can't evaluate this because there's no geometric formula for finding the area under a parabola. Ex actually, there is, but we don't know it. Okay? It's not something that you did in your geometry class. Um, so we're going to have to use some calculus methods to get this. Um, the first thing we're going to do, the first calculus method, it's not really a calculus method, uh, is we're going to learn how to do this on the calculator. We're going to have the calculator tell us the answer here. And what we're going to use is the function called fn int. Um, at least on the TI-83 and the TI-84, that's what it looks like. So I want you to go to the math menu on your calculator. So you're going to go to math. And then the, if you remember, the derivative, I think, was number 8. Uh, the integral is going to be number 9. And it says fn int. Is that right? Is it number 9? Okay. Now, just like last time, this is a function in the calculator. Um, for those of you that have the newer ones, which was most of you, um, it's going to be really easy. You fill it in. Just like we did with the derivative, you fill it in so it looks just like the problem. So you put the 1 and the 2 as your lower and upper limits. You put the x squared as your function. You put the x as your um, variable of integration um, so that you complete that differential there and make it a dx. Uh, hit enter, and it's going to give you the answer. Now, those of you that have the older version, you're going to have to uh, know the notation for this. So it's going to take um, four arguments. The first argument is going to be the function itself. So the function itself is going to be x squared. So you'll type that in. Then you need to uh, let the calculator know what the variable is. So that's going to be x. And then you need to do the lower and the upper limits. So it's going to be 1 and then 2. All right, so those of you that don't have one of the calculators that um, puts the notation in integral um, form like this, uh, you'll have to type it in like this and you hit enter. Those of you that have the TI Inspire, um, you should be able to just punch things in. It looks like this. You guys able to find that? Okay, and what do we get for it? Okay, it is going to end up being two and a third, um, but if, if you use the calculator to do it, go ahead and just round it to the nearest thousand. Now, let me just say this, and this is going to be important later on. A lot of the problems we're going to do with the calculator, we're going to use a calculator to get an intermediate answer meaning an in-between answer, but not a final answer. If that's the case, don't round it to the nearest thousandth. Because it, anytime you round, you get a little bit of a rounding error. It's not exactly 2.333, but it's close to it. 
And if you start working with a bunch of numbers that have a little bit of rounding errors, those rounding errors are going to compound sometimes. Sometimes they kind of cancel each other out and we get a somewhat accurate answer anyway. Um, but we don't know what's going to happen with it. So in that case, you want to do one of two things. You want to round to more decimal places, like five or six, or you can store it as a variable in your calculator. And when we get to the point where we would start need to, needing to do that, I'll help you out with it. All right.